Welcome to the Tesla Economist. Please hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. A lot of people think that the Model S is using the new battery chemistry from the 4680, but in the 18650 form, which explains all the reasons why I found all these performance anomalies between the new Model S versions compared to the previous versions. People throw the words around like it's obvious, but what do they mean by the new chemistry? Well, what was the main chemistry change we saw in the 4680? The dry electrode process, the new cathodes without cobalt, and the anode with silicon. Of course, along with a battery at the ultimate size to deliver power, hold charge, charge fast, and not overheat. This is by no means an easy thing to achieve. Tesla have been working on their Cato Road pilot plant with Project Roadrunner for some time now, trying to perfect the 4680 battery. You see, don't forget, even at battery day, Tesla had already produced a lot of 4680 batteries. They're just working on improving the process since then. Tesla have been working on this line for a year and a half. But no, some people think Tesla have decided to convert their oldest battery form into a new battery chemistry that wasn't entirely designed for this size. Yeah, somehow I don't think that is a good business decision. Yet it would appear, somehow, Tesla are getting over 20% more output per weight. That is a leap in performance. The majority of people tend to think that this is from the new battery chemistry, but some people think they're using the old 18650 form, and others think they've jumped to the 4680 form. Okay, I am in agreement with the people who say they are using the new chemistry. Silicon anode, nickel cathode, tabless design. All right, it sounds like a lot of the 18650 believers actually think the chemistry has changed too in that form and the Plaid is using 18650 batteries with these new processes, basically making 4680 batteries in the 18650 form. Well, if Tesla were able to do that, then why not just do it for the 4680 batteries in a factory down the road from the place they're trying to make the world's quickest car? To achieve a car this fast, it's going to be using their latest tech. It's dramatically faster even than a tri-motor Cybertruck which is definitely using the high nickel 4680s. Just think about this logically. Tesla changed the battery pack to make their most expensive model the quickest car in the world. They've not delivered very many and don't plan on ramping up for a few months. So they actually don't need many batteries for it yet. Let's see, Elon said 1000 Model S deliveries a week next quarter, more likely towards the end of the quarter, not the average. That might be a total of 8,000 units before the end of next quarter, so around 1 gigawatt hours of batteries. Cato Road is meant to have a capacity of 20 gigawatt hours a year. This is not a significant number of 4680 batteries to expect, even when you add the Model X onto it too. The numbers won't be serious until Q1 next year, by which time Tesla will have likely made significantly more advancements in the Cato Road facility. But I think the chemistry is not at all easy. The fact it's been so difficult for the 4680s, I don't see why they would want to invest any resources in making something so difficult again for the 18650 batteries. It does not make good business sense, particularly if you'd be equally close with the 4680s, or likely much closer. Why would you want to start all over again? And especially for your oldest form battery that is the least efficient and you're wanting to use it on your most expensive, highest performance cars. Also, wouldn't we have heard about the actual 18650 battery line being down? Surely that would have been where the major changes would have been taking place. They would have needed one seventh of the room for the factory with the likes of the dry slurry technique. That's a major factory redesign. But people are telling me Tesla have changed the chemistry of the 18650. That's why they're so much better now. So much better even than the 2170. Why not change the chemistry of the 2170 whilst they're at it too then? The car production lines wouldn't even need to be down for Fremont or Shanghai if we're just replacing the chemistry and maintain the 2170 form, right? Seriously, this would be major. 20% less batteries required for each Model Y then. Immediately a saving of two to $3,000 per vehicle. Wow, this new chemistry is not just a way to produce the batteries at lower cost, but you actually require fewer. It's gonna have such an impact on profit margins. Anyway, this would mean that Tesla have cracked the new chemistry being used for the 4680, mainly being the dry electrode process, which I think is what Tesla was struggling with the most. In other words, 
people think that Tessa are now using the dry electrode process with the 18650, the theory being that they weren't able to perfect it early enough on the 4680s, so they just added it to the 18650. Well, if Tessa can't get it right on the 4680, then they probably aren't going to be able to do it for the 18650 either. However, if they can get it right for the 4680, and the Model S production line is down for half a year, then why not put 4680 batteries in the Model S whilst the line is down, rather than working on 18650 batteries? But actually, some people say that Elon confirmed 18650 in the earnings call, which actually isn't true. This is what was said on the call though. So with respect to the Model S and X, there were more challenges than expected in developing the Model S or what we call the Palladium program, which is the new version of Model S and X, which has revised interior and new battery pack and new drive units and new internal electronics and has, for example, a PlayStation 5 level infotainment system. There's just a lot of issues encountered ensuring the new factory was, as we're saying, this was by a smaller place. So it took quite a bit of development to ensure that the battery of the new S and X is safe. And we're trying to get all the in the cars slowly for the past few months, but we're just stacking them up in the yard and just making refinements to the cars that we've built. So Elon is implying there's a lot of work in getting the battery safe for the S and X. I wouldn't have thought this would be an issue if you were using the old 18650 form. Elon also says, on operating expenses, these increase for Q1, which is driven by our investments in technology and growth. In particular, for R&D, this includes the structural battery pack and 4680 cells, investments in the new S and X. This means R&D is up higher because of the structural battery pack and the 4680s. The same time the S and X lines are down and getting a new battery pack. Does this sound coincidental? Oh, but what would they do with all the 18650 batteries then? They'd be wasted, right? Well, batteries are in very high demand these days. I'm sure Tesla can find plenty of places to put these batteries, like energy storage. Besides, Tesla don't even make them. I think Panasonic make them in Japan. Panasonic could likely close down that factory and convert it to a 4680 factory too. I mean, it's a lot easier to convert an existing battery factory to a new battery factory, rather than building a new battery factory. I would say that Panasonic are now converting the old 18650 factory to a 4680 factory. However though, there actually is a chemistry difference, because we have some inconsistent figures with the new long range and the new plaid. The plaid battery delivers a lot more power from only slightly more weight. Therefore, they're not using the same battery pack size or battery chemistry. When you compare the Model S long range with the Model S plaid, again, the specifications do not line up. There is a different chemistry in those two batteries, implying the cathode is nickel and manganese for the long range and high concentration of nickel for the plaid. Whether it's 18650 or 4680, there is no denying this. But my point is, would Tesla really go that much effort to make a new 18650 manganese and nickel cathode and a nickel cathode? Two different chemistries of their old form factor. This is just an insane amount of work for something that will be replaced soon down the road. This much energy does not need to be focused on old battery forms to help build the company. These cars are not crucial to the lifeblood of the business. They are simply used as publicity stunts to demonstrate just how much better electric cars are than ICE. There is very little benefit into retrofitting some older form batteries just to show off. But if you have a new battery form that's all ready for the next level of production and you just need a few for these flagship cars, and they are literally making them down the street from the factory, then hey, why not use them in the most upmarket models? It doesn't just make business sense, it makes common sense. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe.